I know you've written quite a bit about Egypt and how you feel about the conflicts throughout these last few years. Some people say, look, is this what we saw two years ago all over again? And you say, not really. Yeah, this is not the start of the revolution. This is the continuation of the revolution. And what you see is that the majority of Egyptians are trying to press the reset button on the revolution because they know that that's critical to the national reconciliation that's needed to go forward. So what do you think needs to happen? Because the president is facing this deadline from the military. How serious do you think the military is about intervening? And what do you think could happen? How can this end? This is a very serious situation because Egypt lacks strong institutions, lacks a leader like Nelson Mandela that can focus the country forward, and therefore the people are trying to reclaim the revolution. So this is a critical moment. The army is the strongest among a weak set of institutions. So that's why people are looking to the army, and the army is in a difficult situation. So this is very unpredictable. There's no playbook for this, Betty, at all. And the next few hours and days are going to be absolutely critical. Has Morsi been given a chance? I mean, you know, it's hard enough to try to take a company out of chaos, but it, uh, a company, a country out of chaos. But it's even harder, uh, as we saw what happened two years ago, for him to come up uh, with the support of the Muslim Brotherhood, but to come up uh, in a country that uh, has been, you know, has been essentially in turmoil over the last several decades. So there are two complaints against him. One is that he hasn't done enough to bolster the economy and meet social needs. And he inherited a very difficult situation. The second one is one of overreach, that he took his mandate at the, at the ballot box, and rather than earn it every day, he assumed that he could do things that was beyond what society would accept. And th it's the second one that's at the source of a lot of what you see in the street today. Mohammed, what's the chance that this is going to spill over into further unrest, not only in that region, but around the world? You know, it's a very tricky question, because if you look at traditional measures of contagion, trade links, financial links, global demand and supply influences, they're low. But Egypt has a special role in the region. It is the biggest, most influential country, and it has lots of demonstration effects. So it's very difficult to measure the contagion effects to any of the traditional indicators. And that's why the market has woken up late to this issue and is very nervous, in including also, by the way, what's happening in Europe. Europe is another issue yeah. that's making nervous and markets quite nervous. Uh, Mohammed, as I mentioned, I mean, you, you, know, you partly grew up in Egypt and, and you're, you know, you're looking at this from the outside, but you're also very much a part of the fabric there. Uh, where, what side are you on? I mean, what, do you, what do you personally hope to see? So I personally hope to see that critical pivot in any revolution from dismantling a repressive past, which Egypt did in 18 days, to building a more promising future, which is really hard. I would love to see that pivot happen, because if that pivot happens, this is a country that can achieve but do a you lot. Want, but do you want Morsi to stay or go? Yeah, I think at this stage, the country has to move on. I think at this stage, what I would recommend to President Morsi is, look, step down. You cannot govern if you don't have the majority of people on your side, mm. and work within a context, an orderly context, for a transition. Right. That's what I would recommend, but it's very hard for people to do that. 